First, though, we are starting with Gwyneth Paltrow. Overnight, she's won her civil court case against Terry Sanderson, who claimed she crashed into him while skiing in Utah back in 2016. The jury delivered their verdict just a few hours ago. Well, Danny Bear joins us from LA. Good morning, Danny. What was the reaction like in court? It's been a legal week. What can I tell you, Christine? Uh, well, Gwyneth Paltrow firstly thanked the jurors for finding her not liable for the 2016 ski crash in Utah. The jurors took about three hours to deliberate and all came back with the unanimous decision of finding Mr. Sarnison entirely at fault. Now, Gwyneth didn't really show much emotion during the verdict. However, she went up to him as she was leaving the courtroom, placed a hand on his shoulder, and we later found out from Mr. Sarnison she had said to him, I wish you well, which I think is very classy of her considering what he's put her through. He then replied with, thank you, dear. And uh, of course, he was trying to seek $245,000 in damages and uh, clearly was very disappointed by this verdict. So um, what are you going to do? Gwyneth, of course, then went on to Instagram to tell all of her eight plus million followers uh, the following statement. I felt that acquiescing to a false claim compromised my integrity and I'm pleased with the outcome and I appreciate all the hard work from the judge and the jury and thank them for their thoughtfulness in handling this case. Goodness, well, a big day for her. No one wants to have to go through a court case like that. Everyone talking about it around the globe, Dan. I can only imagine she'll be very delighted with the verdict indeed that it is now done. Um, also in America overnight, Donald Trump is set to face criminal charges. This is huge news. Huge is an understatement. So yes, a grand jury in New York has voted for Donald Trump to be indicted. Now this means he is the first president or ex-president to ever face criminal charges. The jury voted to indict him after investigating a 100,000 pound payout to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Now what's interesting here is that the payout isn't technically illegal itself, but what is illegal is the fact that he put it through his lawyers and called the transaction a legal fee. And falsifying uh, business records in the state of New York is a criminal offense. Now, um, of course, Mr. Trump does deny any wrongdoing and he did issue this statement. The Democrats have lied, cheated and stolen in their obsession with trying to get Trump. But now they've done the unthinkable, indicting a complete innocent person in an act of blatant election interference. So there you have it. Uh, meanwhile, Stormy over in Stormy Camp has taken to Twitter. She has thanked everyone for showing so much love and support. Uh, so many messages have come in that I clearly can't respond. And I also don't want to uh, spill my champagne, of course, most importantly. Now, the details of the Trump case have not yet been revealed or released, should I say, but uh, this could probably impact his bid for re-election next year. We'll have more news on this next week, Christine, uh, with Trump arriving in New York on Monday, followed by the court hearing on Tuesday, where he will be read his indictment charges. So stay mm -hmm. tuned for that. Um, it's interesting. Can I just ask you, Danny, what, what is his popularity like right now over there? Well, as it has been over the last few years, the country is so split. You're either on the left or you're on the right, and you're either a Trump fan or you're not. And it's clearly that black and white. So all the Trump fans, you know, clearly go with his narrative of he's completely innocent. And I'm sure everybody on the left is saying, finally, about time too. Yeah. So it really depends which side of the fence you're on. Very interesting times. Thank you very much, Danny. Thank you. Thanks, um, Christine. Also making headlines this morning, Brooklyn Beckham has divided fans with his latest cookery demonstration. <laughs> Rhea, explain. Good morning, Christine. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Every time we post something, you. we I end know. up talking about it. I know. So overnight on Instagram, he's posted this photograph of him with his cute little puppy, Peanut making a spaghetti bolognese. Right. Now, eagle eyed fans have spotted, if you look there, there's a little wine cork yeah. in the Bolognese sauce, right? And so lots of people speculating online why would he have that in there? Is it was it an accident? An accident yeah. As you would naturally think so. So much so he's had to defend himself, and here's what he had to say. He said, More research ensued, and we found information that the addition of wine corks added to the cooking liquid ensured a more tender dish. So oh. there you go. Who knew? Adding a wine cork to your spaghetti bolognese. Right. I imagine it will soak up the juice, so then the meat will probably soak up more of the seasoning. Well, sort of me. I mean, I'd like to know if it's a proper scientific fact. But we should ask it's uh, an Gordon Ramsay, shouldn't yes, we? Yes, yes, we should. <laughs> Next time, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Simon Cowell yes. in the papers this morning yes. for an unusual reason. <laughs> yes, so various uh, sources have reported that, you know, he's lost over three stone recently, looking mm. very trim. But apparently, 
apparently it's not just down to his healthy lifestyle and eating well. It's apparently because he's wearing a medical corset. Now, you'll remember back in 2020, he had that awful accident on that electrical oh. scooter. He nearly, you know, paralysed his back. It was quite serious. Thankfully, he's OK now, but he's been looking very trim. And he's been photographed returning to the set of Americans Got Talent. If you look at this picture, you can see a little outline there. Look, just very, very slightly round his tummy. Yes, yes where, you can. Where yeah. we think he might have his, uh, his corset on there, look. Right. Uh, and well, it's just good for posture anyway, Absolutely. Isn't it? yeah. You know, it's all part of his recovery. And while he's on the men, though, sources say that he's apparently completely lost his voice. He's got laryngitis. And so while he's filming the new series of Americans Got Talent, he's having to write his notes for the contestants and pass them on to his fellow judges to read out on his behalf. And uh, I mean, it's hilarious. So Sophie Vergara is having a right chuckle at this because she's reading things incorrectly to what he said, just to have a bit of a giggle with him. She's keeping it fun. Of course. <laughs> but it, it's listening to what he has to say makes the show, unfortunately, Absolutely. isn't it? It's not quite the same. Yeah. Anyway, he'll, <laughs> he'll be back, I'm sure, in full form. And now, a very unlikely face. Well, maybe not so unlikely, considering what happened last time around. Okay. Uh, could be heading to the jungle. Yes, yeah, so I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Might be adding another politician. Apparently, Liz Trust is reportedly favourite to sign up. She's currently the bookies' favourites at 25 to 1. I mean, that and looks like the real thing, to she be fair, does doesn't good, it? doesn't she? <laughs> and hey, let's face it, she might do a bit better in the jungle. Who knows? And she did in politics. But uh, as you remember, Health Secretary Matt Hancock did very well. He was in the final three yeah, last yeah. year. But other names reportedly in the mix include former England star, uh, Peter Crouch. Oh. I'd love to ask your Frank for an inside scoop, won't you? Oh, no, he'll be... Oh, Peter Crouch would be brilliant He in would there. be so he's, good. He's very funny, yeah. Also, good. Jamie Lang from Made in Chelsea. Yes. They'd be good too. But interestingly, Ed Sheeran's name's also been thrown in the hat. Surely not. I would love to see Ed, because he'd entertain everyone with his music, Well, he could, yeah, because they all do a little bit of singing here and there, don't exactly. they? I mean, you've got Ed Sheeran in it's there. It's long days, isn't it? It's long days. You need to entertain each other. He's apparently said on the Jonathan Ross show, which airs this weekend, End. How out of all the reality shows, this is one he'd love to do because it looks like it's lots of fun. And let's not forget, you know, it won an NTA for Best Entertainment last year. It would be lots of fun, although he said he probably wouldn't do it. But we'd love yeah. to see it, Ed. I, I we'd love can't to see imagine it. it, but yes, if we were <laughs> in there, it would be definitely worth yeah. a watch. Um, this is a very interesting concept, Rhea. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. A survival show. Um, and that's the only picture we could show of it. I mean, this is this is going to have us all talking. So this is a new Channel 4 show. It's called Naked Alone and Racing to Get Home. It's basically <laughs> follows... How long did it take to come up with the I name? Mean, That's honestly. very good. <laughs> it follows two pairs of complete strangers who are stripped bare of all their possessions and they have to run across the English countryside in a bid to win a cash prize and all their possessions back. And apparently, when they were filming, one couple found the experience so bonding that they now got engaged. What? Yeah. Here's a sneak peek. <laughs> Strategically placed pieces of fern just to make this not illegal. <laughs> you wouldn't know where to put your eyes, would you, if you bumped into them in the countryside? That is... You know I'll watch it, so anyway. <laughs> Rhea, thank you very thank much, you. as always.